Hey girls and gals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today's video is going to be a very exciting themed TBR video where I am starting three different series of series that are so hyped on booktube, seeing if the hype is real and if I like these series and I want to continue. So I did pick out three books. They're all first books in a series, um, either a trilogy or higher. And I tried to choose books from like a variety of different genres. So I do have one fantasy, one sci-fi, and one gothic horror book as well. So we have a variety of different series to choose from. I am very excited to start this vlog and see what I think of some of these very, very hyped series. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Talk about the book that I am going to be reading for this reading challenge. So book number one for this vlog, I'm starting the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. The first book is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. This is a sci-fi series of I believe about four books now. They're all kind of connected, like they're in the same universe. I believe maybe there's some overlap between characters, but you're not following like one primary main character each time. I picked the series up because I have read a standalone by Becky Chambers before and this is a very hyped series on I feel at least science fiction booktube and a lot of people that I watch who read science fiction love this series because it is very character driven sci-fi and it has lots of queer rep both things that I do love in books so and definitely I feel like at least for someone who like me very new to the science fiction genre can be hard to find so I'm very excited to start this series the long way to a small angry planet i hear so many people talk about the series hype this series up say that they absolutely love it so i'm very excited to pick it up the next series that i plan on starting in this video is going to be the strange case of the alchemist's daughter series i'm not sure if this series it's a trilogy has another name other than that but it's by theodora goss this is the first in a gothic sort of horror fantasy story about a bunch of daughters of like these fictional gothic monsters like I think the daughter of Frankenstein's monster or Frankenstein himself is in here as well as our main character's name is Mary Jekyll so after Jekyll and Hyde I really enjoy books with a lot of literary references kind of little nods like that love gothic fiction and I really do enjoy horror and fantasy kind of blending in that way this one I would say out of the three books that I chose for this video is the least high per se but well maybe this series I haven't seen the most people talk about it every single booktuber that I do watch has read this series and it's like one of their favorite series so I'm very intrigued to pick this series up I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun and I can't wait to start it as well a lot of people with very similar reading taste to me have really enjoyed this series so I can't wait to see what all the hype is about for this one and then the last book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog and it's actually the book that I'm starting the vlog out with I'm going to be starting to read after this update is probably also I would say the most hyped without a doubt out of these three books and I will say this book um, at least this series I would say is probably the one with the most divisive opinions the second two I would say are very hyped but I don't see like a lot of negativity for it this series you either love it you either hate it I feel like it's still one of the most hyped series on booktube so I am intrigued I am going to be also starting this series by Sarah J Mass, starting off with A Court of Thrones and Roses now this series I've heard a lot about. I have read everything else by this author. Um, I started out last year picking up the Crescent City House of Earth and Blood book, really enjoyed that, moved on to Throne of Glass. I was initially not planning on picking this book up just because I don't tend to really like fairy tale retellings. I've heard at least this first book is supposed to be a Beauty and the Beast reimagining and I had heard this is like just the most like smutty. I've heard this one is very character driven, this series at least, and and while I do enjoy romance in books, it's definitely not like a favorite genre of mine and especially even like fantasy romance. I like there to be a lot of fantasy with the romance. So I was planning on maybe just not picking this series up, maybe just it not being a good fit for me, despite me hearing so much about this 
series. However, one of my new co-workers, this is her favorite series and she recommended me read it. And you know, new job, new co-worker, I really enjoy her. So you know what, I figured it might as well pick it up. Um, library books are free. So I figured I would go ahead and give it a shot. So this is my fantasy pick for this reading vlog. So we're starting three series. They're all very different series. This is a fantasy romance. We've got a gothic horror fantasy, and then we also have a sci-fi. So I have read books by two of these authors. One of these authors is new to me, so I feel like even though they are all first books in a series, we have a lot of variety for this vlog, and I'm very excited to kick this vlog off, kind of see which ones that I like, which ones maybe I don't like so much, and then at the end, I'll say whether or not I will be continuing on with any of these series. My predictions just really fast before we get into this vlog. I would have to say probably from favorite to least favorite. I'm going to guess that I'm going to like a long way to a small angry planet the best just because I loved Becky Chambers novella that I read earlier on this year and it really impacted me emotionally in a way that no other novella really has before. So if she can pack such a punch in such a small amount of pages, I feel like a full length book from her will just really, really hit home and I'll really enjoy it. So I have a feeling this is going to be my favorite. Next up, probably I'd have to say The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter just because um, this is YA and I have noticed unfortunately this year I'm gradually moving away from YA. A lot of YA I pick up even if I do like it um, doesn't really meet like expectations that I've put upon it. However, a lot of readers that I feel like I have very similar reading taste to on booktube love this series. So I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy it as well. And then, you know, the one that I'm starting this vlog off with reading first, um, I'm gonna guess that I'll probably like this one the least just because again, romance heavy books, not my thing. But there is something very, very addicting about Sarah J Moss books. So, you know, who knows? It might be my favorite. So that's, I did try and pick three books that I would at least enjoy because I didn't wanna go out of the way to make myself miserable. So I'm hoping that I like all three of these that's my estimated ranking. Um, we're gonna get into the vlog now. We're going to be starting off with A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I will talk to you all when I have an update on this book. first reading update. I think what I'm going to do for every single book is have a kind of like starting update, a midpoint update, and then an update when I finish the book. So I am about, I think it's more actually at this point, like 60% of the way through A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass, And I am really flying through this one. I think I started this one maybe two days ago from when I actually started this vlog and decided to pick this book up first. And yeah, I am about 60% of the way through this one. So it is really flying. It is about 400 pages, but I will say definitely does not feel like a 400 page book. The pacing is very fast and the chapters are also very short. So it really does feel like you can cover a lot of ground and kind of make this book feel a little less thick than it actually is. I mean, I think 400 pages is on the bigger side of a book, but definitely not intimidating for me, but I will say it definitely doesn't feel like 400 pages. If I had to guess, I would have said maybe this would have hit 300, maybe a little over that, but I am enjoying it like I did mention before. I think when I was trying to rank all of these books by how much I would like them, I did mention I'm not a big fan of like fairy tale retelling. So this series, or rather this book, is actually a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which is fairly obvious 
lights. Um, there's definitely like a lot thrown in there in terms of like fairy worlds and fairy kingdoms and other like mythologies being woven in, but at its heart, it's very clearly a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So for me, what I don't really like about a lot of retellings, especially when they're very loyal to the original plot and the original story is that you know you know what's going to happen there's not a whole lot of surprises in the plot especially with something like beauty and the beast i do know that story so this is hitting a lot of the same marks and there's not a lot of suspense in it for that however i do know um this is i think it's a trilogy plus a novella plus like a new series that's kind of a spin-off of this series i am gonna guess that this like starts out as a beauty and the beast retelling and then really transforms into a different story kind of like how throne of glass was actually like a cinderella retelling at the beginning and i also think that first book in that series feels very different from the rest of the series just in terms of like stakes and the plot and once you kind of realize that it's like a cinderella retelling um it's very interesting going back and thinking about the events that happen in throne of glass and kind of examining it through that lens but as a beauty and the beast retelling it is pretty obvious to me however i am still enjoying this one i mean it's just something about sarah j mass's writing is just very very addictive for me at least as a reader so again 60 percent of the way through it um, I'm on chapter 27 and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm having a good time reading it. Um, I don't think, if I continue on with this series, which I haven't decided yet, um, if I continue, I don't anticipate this being my favorite Sarah J Maas series, but um, I'm enjoying it more than I thought I would, especially that retelling really scared me off. And of course, it is fantasy romance with fairies. There's a lot of of sort of chirpy things that you can kind of expect going in um, just in terms of the romance there. This came out in 2015 and I think in a lot of ways it is very much a product of its time. I do think that 2015, you know, we're kind of moving out of like the 2010s era um, but we're still very much in that era of I feel like YA and this is I believe technically new adult um, has just a certain sort of ambiance and a certain sort of feeling when you go into it so that was kind of nostalgic. It definitely feels like a book written around that time so of course you know nothing in it in terms of that tone and some of the tropes maybe are that new to me however I think it was really trailblazing during its time in like 2015. I could be wrong I wasn't really reading too much in 2015 um, and I'm really thinking more of like 2000 9, 10, 11, I feel like that era of YA, this is really reminding me of a lot of books that I was reading during that time. So it is very nostalgic. I'm enjoying it. Again, flying through this one, I should be able to finish it very soon. Once I finish it, I'll check back with y'all and I'll let you know my thoughts once I am done. So I am here with a book update. I did finally finish Sarah J Maas's A Court of Thorns and Roses and I did really enjoy it. So my final thoughts on this is that I definitely think the second half of the book worked a lot more than the first half for me just because this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Retellings are not my favorite subgenre of fantasy or really any other sort of subgenres. It really takes a lot for me to really truly love a retelling 
However, once this book moved past like the plot of Beauty and the Beast that we all know and kind of transformed into something else, that was really interesting. I will say I do think Sarah J Maas out of all her books, even my least favorite of her books have really explosive endings, endings that want to make you pick up the next installation in the series and just has a really good way of kind of bringing everything all together and completing that stories arc. Now I will say for this one, I feel like Throne of Glass, the first book kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger that leaves you wanting more. Whereas I feel like Crescent City and this one both wrap up conflict enough. So where if you were to finish it and not want to continue on with the rest of the series, yes, you would still have questions, but the main sort of plot in the specific book was answered. So, you know, honestly, I could finish this and not go on with the series, be completely fine, maybe have some thoughts and some questions about the world that the characters are in, but the main conflict of this book was completely resolved. So I do always appreciate that, especially especially in a book where, you know, I wasn't really sure in this vlog if I'm going to continue all of these series. So I did like how everything wrapped up at the end. It was very fairy tale esque the way this wrapped up, but I do believe, you know, that's kind of par for the course in terms of the fairy tale reimagining that it was doing. Also, I think Sarah J Moss just really does like to have happy endings in her stories and like story arcs, at least for most of our main characters, but it was really enjoyable and I will say I think at this point it is still my least favorite of Sarah J Moss's series however will I be continuing on with this series probably I probably will I think I've decided from reading this book I will say it's not one where I am immediately dying to dive in to the next book and complete the rest of the series but it is definitely one where I am intrigued to read the series I mean I know a ton of people both in like my real life and on booktube and bookstagram and all that who really do like this series so I probably will continue on with this series at some point in large part because I think the rest of the series is not a retelling it's more more of its own sort of story and a larger scale conflict going on so I'm intrigued looking forward to picking up the rest of the series whenever I decide to eventually do that so far I would say this vlog has been a success book one out of three I have enjoyed I want to keep reading the series now moving on to the next book that I'm reading for this vlog and that's the strange case of the alchemist daughter by Theodora Goss this is a young adult gothic sort of fantasy tale about about a bunch of different characters and I will say it is very interesting that I have mentioned at length in this vlog that I don't tend to like retellings because this is kind of diving into that but it's not a retelling but more of like cameos if that makes sense because all of our main characters are the daughters or I guess children because I haven't met them all yet of famous um, beasts or creatures or characters in gothic novels. So for example our first main character we're introduced to in this book is Mary Jekyll, daughter of Dr. Jekyll. We're also going to meet someone named Diana Hyde very soon. They've also been talking at length with Sherlock Holmes and there are some murders happening that may or may not be, I can't remember exactly the time frame, but they might be kind of recalling sort of a Jack the Ripper style of situation. So it's like a gothic YA horror fantasy series. I did start this last night and I am very intrigued. I remember this I feel like was bigger when I was a kid at least but I really enjoyed as a kid reading things where it did have that callback where you'd have like famous figures from other literature kind of like these big cameos or easter eggs of other things in like a book sort of like a reimagining I always thought that was really neat I'm not too far into this one but I am very intrigued I will say I did start this one last year and quickly DNF'd it because I was listening to the audio book and this book has a very interesting sort of format where as you can see there will be just like the regular book going on and then the characters themselves will interject in the middle of the action and kind of discuss the scene 
and discuss what is happening before it jumps back to the regular book format. That was really, really hard to keep track of, at least for me, because there was only one audiobook narrator and it was just, I was having trouble following who was saying what um, in terms of that. But I did start this physically last night. I will give another update when I'm halfway through. I am enjoying it so far. I do love a good Victorian sort of gothic piece. I really enjoy, well, I used to really enjoy books set in this time frame and really enjoy like historical fiction fantasy. I haven't really found one recently that I've enjoyed, unfortunately, but I mean, one of my favorite series of all time is the His Dark Materials series, and that's like a very steampunky sort of quaint fantasy world. I do really love that sort of fantasy setting where it's like very antiquated, but you also have magical elements, which is if we're talking about like monsters and children of monsters here, um, I think that's going to be involved in this. So I'm very excited to delve more into this one and I will check back in with you guys when I've gotten halfway through and give you my thoughts. with another reading update. I am about 60% of the way through the strange case of the alchemist's daughter and i am really enjoying this one so far as well so so far so good i will say i still have not managed to really connect with the audiobook i am kind of going back and forth between reading this physically and the audiobook i have heard a lot of people really really love the audiobooks of this series however again i will mention last year i tried reading the audio of this i had to dnf it um, and honestly, I do believe probably the same thing would have happened had I just picked it up audiobook as opposed to physical book. I definitely am reading most of it via the physical copy. Um, I'm just also listening to the audiobook a little bit here and there. I downloaded it on Scribd, so just when I'm like doing tasks, I listen to it on the way to work today, um, but definitely I'm mostly reading this one physically. I'm just finding it's a lot better of a reading experience, so my thoughts on this one so far, I am enjoying it. This is kind of like a horror gothic sort of Victorian novel and we are following Mary Jekyll. At the beginning of this novel, she has just lost her mother and she has previously also lost her father as well. So she has become an orphan with little prospects because she's out of money. Her mother had a long illness that took its toll on her. So she unfortunately is very confined by her time and doesn't really have a lot of options for her. It's very bleak. However, she finds in her mother's inheritance, which is not a lot of money, but there are some mysterious documents that at first Mary Jekyll thinks is potentially like a secret bank account and she might be able to find some funds for herself and for her kind of um, I don't want to say nursemaid, but she's some sort of nanny sort of figure, Mrs. Poole, who has been with her since she was a child um, and who is continuing to live with her.
with her after her mother has died. So she goes on this goose chase to find these funds just to get money to stay afloat. However, instead of just a secret bank account, she discovers more secrets and also the fact that her father potentially had an illegitimate child and she now has a half sister that she has to take care of. This half sister's name is Diana Hyde and Mary starts to believe that her father, Dr. Jekyll, might have had a very sinister dark side where he might have transformed into something else. So as you can guess from some of those names, this does play on the daughters and children of some very famous gothic tales. We have nods to Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, their characters in here. We're also talking about Dr. Moreau, Frankenstein, um, I believe potentially Dracula might find his way in here as well. Just a whole lot of penny dreadful sort of tales and characters that you've heard about um, and it's their children. So there's a mystery afoot. It is very much kind of like a penny dreadful and honestly I probably might compare it. I do think it is a really good maybe comparison to the show Penny Dreadful. I've only seen like most of the first season of that that show. I unfortunately didn't like that show as much as I thought I would. I started it I think last year around this time. This very much feels like a YA version of that if you've ever seen that show where it does have like a core group of investigators investigating paranormal mysteries with lots and lots of references to gothic classic works. So if you liked that, this definitely gives me similar premise vibes, but just done in more of like a YA manner. It does get dark, it talks about a lot of dark things, but the characters do feel very young. The tone is very young because it is narrated by the characters themselves. Um, nothing wrong with that, just uh, definitely a YA sort of spin on all of these tropes. Um, there are like trigger warnings for if you think about some of these classics and then the young women and the children, children sometimes experiments to come out of it. There's trigger warnings for like torture and experimentation. They're also investigating a series of murders that I think are supposed to kind of be potentially Jack the Ripper. So it does get very graphic and bloody. It is YA. It doesn't like have any gratuitous explanations. Um, there are like some discussions about things that the characters had to overcome and had to go through in their pasts, but it's not like very, very detailed or gory or drawn out in that way. So yeah, I'm enjoying this so far. I have like this chunk of it left. So I am hopefully going to finish this up either tonight or tomorrow, and then I will check back in and give an update once I finish this book. With another reading update, I have officially finished The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss, and I did end up liking this one. I will say, um, unfortunately, this one, while I did like it, it really didn't live up to the hype that I had in my head and that I had seen other people hyping this one up on booktube, um, but I did enjoy it. On paper and just compared to some other booktubers that I have similar taste to, this should be like one of my favorite books of the year. However, it did miss the mark a little bit. I did enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. I thought this was a very good book. However, I did feel, number one, it just felt a little young for me in tone. I think I talked about this in my last update for this book, but the characters are very young, understandably. This is YA and the characters are young women. They're all, I think they're from the ages of like 10 to 12 to 16 
maybe? I can't remember. But they are all very young protagonists and understandably that means this did read a little bit young. And then the second thing that I felt with this one was the narrative choice for this book. This is supposed to be told, so instead of Theodora Goss, the author writing it, um, when you're reading it, it's clear that one of our main characters is actually writing these events after the fact. And all of the other characters in this book are constantly interjecting to kind of give their perspectives on what happened or just correct things. And a lot of banter, which can be fun at times. And one of my favorite books of all times has a very similar sort of setup, Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. That one had like a lot of footnotes and interjections by a narrator. However, I think that worked a little bit better was because that one was like an omniscient narrator that you never meet in the story. And it was all like small footnotes and asides and foreshadowing in that one. This one, um, sometimes it would be very long, like there would be a full page of these characters interacting with each other about the events of the story instead of the story taking place, which kind of brought me out of it just a little bit. And then also, since we do have the characters themselves, um, there's really not a lot of mystery or even when the stakes are very high, the characters are narrating it themselves. So you kind of know they're all going to make it out okay. So that really lowers the stakes, at least for me. Again, I feel like for like a younger audience, this would work a lot better. Um, in fact, I know when I was in, I think, probably younger high school and like definitely like junior high school, I absolutely would have dug this book. And um, I just think that my reading tastes have changed a little bit since then, unfortunately. But I was enjoying the story. I did love all of the little nods to classic gothic fiction. I thought that was very neat. Um, my biggest like kind of question about this was how one of my favorite gothic books, um, one of the characters is interpreted in a way in this that I can't share without completely spoiling, but the way that that is done in this book is I feel like very contrary to the main premise of that original book and kind of what you're supposed to get out of that original book. And again, just because I think largely in part of the way how this is told, it kind of has to be that way. But there is a lot of telling, not a lot of showing, this really kind of there's not a lot of action in here and the vast majority of this book is through conversations and characters kind of info dumping. Like there's a chapter for every single character where they tell the other characters their backstory. And in a lot of ways, this did feel like an introduction to a series as opposed to like a first book of a series. I don't know how to describe it any more than that. Like I felt like the mystery in here took second place to just introducing all of our characters, which, um, you know, there are about five or six main characters, so it's needed. But I just felt ultimately, I think this is about 400 pages and it's just shy of 400 pages. And I just felt like this was just introducing the characters. There was a mystery, but that mystery was solved, I thought very quickly and conveniently and um, there wasn't a lot of character development, which again, this is a series, so that can be fine. Just um, I feel like for me, unfortunately, I am probably not going to continue with the series. I will say I did enjoy this. I'm not mad that I read it. I enjoyed my time reading it. I would have DNF'd it had I not. But since the main mystery of this first book is wrapped up um, and they're going into other adventures in next installations of this series, I feel like I can end it here. Um, I just I don't feel very compelled to pick up the next two books in this series, but I did enjoy reading it. I did have a pleasant time reading it. But yeah, ultimately I am just planning at the moment. I just don't think that this book series is for me, unfortunately, because on paper it did really feel like it would be a new favorite series for me. But at the moment, finished this and will not be continuing on with this series. And then the last book in this vlog that I'm going to be starting today is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a science fiction book and it's the 
first book in a series. I believe this series though doesn't always follow the same main characters. They're like in the same universe and there's like some nods to other books but I believe this series every single book follows different characters. All I really know is that this is a very character driven sci-fi and we're following our main character Rosemary Harper and she joins the crew of the Wayfarer, which is a ship. This patched up ship has seen better days, but it offers her everything she could possibly want. A spot to call home, a chance to explore the far off corners of the galaxy and some distance from her past. The journey through the galaxy is full of excitement, adventure, and mishaps for the Wayfarer team. And along the way, Rosemary comes to realize that a crew is a family and that family isn't necessarily the worst thing in the universe as long as you actually like them. So that sounds like a found family trope. I love found family. I've read one other thing from this author before and that was to be taught if fortunate. I really enjoyed it. So I am hoping that I love this one as much as I did the last thing that I read from her. I've heard so many good things about this series and I'm very excited to dive into it and I will check back in when I'm halfway through this one with some more thoughts about this book and the Wayfarer series. Alright, I am back with an update for what is potentially, so far, my favorite book of this entire vlog, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I am pretty much exactly 50% of the way through this one and I am absolutely loving it. This one was the one I said at the beginning of the vlog, probably. I had the highest expectations for it just because I had read To Be Taught Fortunate by the same author and I just absolutely loved it and I tend to be more of a series reader than a standalone reader so I thought if I really enjoyed a standalone novella by this author I would probably also really enjoy the first in a I believe four book series so I'm really enjoying it so far. I have also said before I generally like science fiction that's more space opera and definitely more of like character driven and where the problems and the conflict aren't coming from like space if that makes any sense like for example for movies i don't like movies like interstellar where it's like space is the enemy or space is the conflict i generally tend to enjoy space like content more like star wars where space is a setting and not the problem i'm a big fantasy reader so i have a hunch that's why i tend to enjoy space operas because a lot of times those can feel more like fantasy novels set in space as opposed to like a contemporary with space where sometimes I feel like some hard science fiction tends to lean that way. I don't know but I'm just really enjoying this one. We are following a ship called the Wayfarer and we're kind of following, I thought there was going to be one main character in this like following one point of view but you really bounce around between all the characters. It's third person narration but it's third person narration where it kind of goes from point of view to point of view so you can tell what certain characters are thinking in certain scenes. So I'm really enjoying it. It is a very, very ragtag crew of very likable characters, very interesting characters. This is my library's copy right here. I actually ended up purchasing the audiobook version from Libra FM um, just because I am really loving this and especially for there's a lot of like big concepts in here just in terms of tech and alien races and just different explanations of that sort of science in here. I find it really really enjoyable to read while I'm listening to the audiobook at the same time and honestly I can tell from reading this one. I'm only halfway through. I absolutely love it. I want to continue on with the series. I mean, unless something terribly drastic happens in the last 50%, I do know that this is one I'll probably even want to reread. So that's why I ended up purchasing my own copy. And for what it's worth, I have not purchased either of the other two books right here. I got all three of the physical versions from my library. And then I was also, when I was able to listening to the audio 
audiobook versions from either Libby, which is through your libraries, or I also use Scribd as well, which you do pay for the service monthly, but you can listen to, I would say, pretty much unlimited audiobooks. There are some caps on that site, um, but just depending on what titles you listen to, you can pretty much keep listening to as many audiobooks as you can instantaneously. I usually switch between those and Libro FM. I've got a lot of audiobook apps going on that I do utilize in very different ways, but I definitely think just kind of a little sneak peek for the end of this video probably. This is the only one that I was gripped enough where I wanted to purchase my own copy. So I did purchase a copy on Libro FM for the audiobook and I'm just really loving it so far. Um, so yeah, so far so good. It's very character driven. We really have just our characters kind of in the middle of this starting to see some conflict and building up to like the major plot of this. This very much introduced all the characters one by one in the ship itself and what kind of action we can expect from all the characters in the ship. So I'm very excited to see what happens next in this one and I will check back in when I finished this book. So it is finally time to wrap up this vlog, talk about all three of these series, talk about how I felt about them, if I want to continue on with this series. But first, I do want to talk about the last book that I completed for this vlog, and that would be The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I really, really enjoyed this one, and honestly, I think think it's my favorite out of all three of these books just because it was everything that I do tend to look for in sci-fis. This is very very I would say almost slow moving slow paced. We are following a lot of different characters on board a ship and I would say it's definitely more of a space opera. Um, than a hard science fiction because I am still a newbie to a lot of those terms and to the genre in general, but I feel like a lot of the conflict, this is set far, far in the future. Humans are living in relative harmony with other different species of aliens and there's lots of like interplanetary travel and just a lot of components that definitely make this feel almost has like a Star Wars sort of feel where you have this crew of ragtag individuals completing missions. Now that I say that I probably I would say it's a lot more like Star Trek just in terms of you're following this ship and the individuals on it as they embark on scientific missions. So definitely Star Trekian in that way as well as the conflict doesn't come from going through space. The conflict arises from different interpersonal relationships. A lot of the conflict is definitely internal to the different characters. So I really enjoyed this. Very, very casually queer, which I also enjoyed as well. I will say I don't know if this series is going to be for everyone just because it is very character driven. The plot is very slow and a lot of times the plot kind of different plot points resolve themselves very quickly because you almost feel like the characters are more important than the plot per se. So if you're not a big fan of that, I don't know how much you would enjoy this book. This is definitely for a character driven reader. 
um, which I love, but if a lot of people are looking for like a more static heavy plot, you might be a little let down by this, but I thought it was absolutely fascinating. There are several detours in here that don't have to deal with our main plot. They're just kind of there um, and just exploring different species in the galaxy and their different cultures and all that. And I just really enjoyed the time spent with all the characters. I really enjoyed the series. I will be continuing. So at the beginning of this vlog, um, it's taken me a while to film, um, I had predicted that this was going to be the order in which I liked these books. So I thought my least favorite would be A Court of Thorns and Roses, and then The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, and then The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. However, that has been changed around a little bit. So um, it is actually this right here. So I will say I did enjoy every single one of these books. There weren't really any that I had a hard time getting through or that I just really didn't enjoy and didn't want to finish. None of these were DNFs. I can say they're all well-written books. That being said, there's definitely a hierarchy based on how much I enjoyed them. So in last place, we do have The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. I unfortunately just didn't really vibe with this book as much as I wanted to. I will not be continuing on with this series. Um, it just felt a little too young to me, which it is YA. So I think both of these are actually new adult and adult so this definitely did feel in tone like the youngest book which is okay i don't have anything personally issues with ya i'm just noticing as i'm getting closer and closer to my 30s i would prefer to read about characters that are older in adulthood as opposed to 16, 17, 18, just not the kind of characters that I really relate with. There are definitely some exceptions to that, of course. This one just felt very young and with the kinds of things this was talking about, with all of the nods to classic gothic literature, I was really hoping it was going to be more like Penny Dreadful, the TV show. I would say if you enjoyed this concept and maybe tried this out, didn't like it, Penny Dreadful, it's an older show, I believe at this point but it honestly does have a very similar first premise with a bunch of nods to different classic gothic books all kind of being smashed together into one creepy murder mystery storyline i would say probably that um, I really enjoyed for the premise. This one, again, just felt a little too young. I'm not the target audience for this book. I'm a very character-driven reader, and I just really didn't um, connect with any of the characters as much as I was hoping to. So unfortunately, I will not be continuing on with this series. I will say the main mystery of this first book does get concluded in this first book. So um, I definitely don't feel like there is, there are overarching mysteries throughout the series, but the main one in this book is concluded. So definitely I don't feel compelled to pick up any more of the books in this series. In second place, we have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. This one, very unexpected, I will say. The part that was pretty much just a beat for beat retelling of the Beauty and the Beast were my least favorite parts of this one. Me and retellings, they're just not my favorite subgenre of book. However, once this started turning into something more, I enjoyed it a whole lot more. I think also Sarah J Moss has such a good way of ending things. Um, definitely they can be a little bit too optimistic and a little too happily ever after at points. However, I just feel like sometimes I read a lot of dark stuff. I read a lot of horror. I read a lot of fantasy. Sometimes it's nice to get that nice conclusion at the end of a book. So this one, um, based on the first half of the book, I wouldn't continue on with the series. The second half of the book, however, I will be continuing on with the series. I just want to know what all the hype's about. I've also heard from different people on booktube and like their opinions about different characters. After reading this book, I don't see where anyone is coming from at all. So I'm going to have to assume that throughout this series, we get some definite character changes and different actions that characters do to make them unlikable or more likable in the eyes of this fandom. So I will be continuing on with this one. Sarah J Maas has just such an addictive writing style. I will say this one 
also wrapped up very happily at the end or just wrapped up very neatly. There is an overarching plot which you don't get to in this one. However, a lot of the action is resolved. So I have finished this one. I will be picking up the next book in the series. I don't know how soon that will be because there's not really a cliffhanger in this one. So I don't feel like I need to rush to the next one, but I will be continuing on with the series. It was just a whole lot of fun. I'm also very, very intrigued because this did feel like it was teetering on YA at times and then NA at times. However, I have heard that there is a definite, definite character shift, not character shift, but tonal shift that makes this series a very, very new adult um, and very smutty. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this series goes. And then first place for this vlog, already talked about it in this clip, but that would be The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Really enjoyed this one. Again, I've read two things by Becky Chambers before. Really adored both. Also, this one, I do believe this series actually follows the same ship. It's the Wayfarer series, so I think it follows the ship. I don't know if it follows the same core cast of characters each time or not, which I'm a little concerned about, not going to lie, because there were a lot of characters that I absolutely adored in this one and would like to see in later installations. This one, I also feel like it's a series that is very separate from one another. Like, you're going to want to read them in order, but you don't necessarily have to remember all the events of this first book because the second, third, and fourth books are following very different sort of issues almost in the fact like if you watch a tv show like star trek it would be optimal if you watch them all in order however there are definitely some episodic episodes that you can watch like out of order and still kind of know the context for i think that's how this series might be regardless i am also looking forward to picking this one up soon now it is very interesting because honestly, while I did enjoy this one better overall, I feel like I would pick up the Akatar series before I would pick up this one just because of the momentum of Akatar. I feel like there's an overarching plot in that one, whereas the series, I don't think there's an overarching plot. So I will be continuing. I don't know when I will pick up the rest of this series, but I absolutely had a whole lot of fun reading that. And that is going to be the end of this vlog. I had a whole lot of fun doing this video just because there are so many series that I have on my TBR and that I have on my want to read list and I just never get around to doing them because starting a series is a very big commitment. So definitely it was fun to pick three series, three very different series that for the most part are completed. There is like a spin-off series to the Akatar books that I'm not really counting because the main events of Akatar are finished in the three books in the novella. So I really enjoyed kind of prioritizing these books and figuring out if there were some new series that I had been sleeping on, finding two out of three series, new series to continue on reading. I feel like that's a very good number for me, but that is going to be the end of this TBR video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content from me, stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!